Have you ever had the feeling that you're not alone? That there's a presence in the room? Something you can't quite explain? It's the stuff of ghost stories. Just the product of an overactive imagination, you might think. But could there be more to it? Well, we've come to Switzerland to visit an unusual lab. They've investigated everything from out-of-body experiences to phantom limbs, the phenomenon where an arm's been amputated, say, but still feels like it's there. Well, recently, they've discovered a new phenomenon, which is spookily a bit ghost-like. Indeed, the researchers have tricked people's brains into feeling an unexplained presence. There were comments like, this is completely eerie, like there is some sinister being, something that has bad intent. But there was always a report of someone who wants to do something to me. As it turns out, these are very similar to sensations associated with epilepsy and schizophrenia. This is very similar to a neurological disease happening in some patients with peculiar brain lesions, where they report to have someone behind them. Could understanding that feeling of being haunted lead to new psychiatric treatments? This is why we took it from the clinic into the research lab, so we can have a similar phenomenon under controlled conditions, and we can advance more quickly in understanding what the real mechanisms are involved in such very strange sensations. Now, before we get on to the scientific explanation for ghosts, you first need to know a little bit more about yourself. You and I are not what we seem. For example, I may think that my body is me and what's not my body is not me, but things are not that simple. That sense of meanness is actually constructed. The sense of self is the product of all these signals from your body, from inside and outside your body, being processed at the same time. And so it's from the coherence of these inputs that our brain generates a sensation of having a body always here. But this unified sense of self can break down. So what we do is we manipulate the signals to induce illusions. And in this way, we can study how the brain experiences the body and how the brain generates the sense of self. OK. So I put one hand one side, one on the other. Okay. Yeah. And I'm about to experience this firsthand. <laughs> That's completely realistic. In this experiment, they're going to convince me a rubber hand is actually my hand. Let's try. OK. So what happens during the rubber hand, you feel touch on your hand, because there is an experimenter touching your hand, and you don't see that hand being touched. And then meanwhile, you see a rubber hand, a fake hand, being touched. My brain needs to solve this conflict. And the way of solving this conflict is creating an illusion. That is, the rubber hand is my hand. I can feel that. I can feel that completely. <laughs> it's bizarre. Just very simple. And it's because my brain is seeing and feeling something and just assuming I'm feeling it in this rubber hand. So it's my, my consciousness, in a sense, is just leaping into this prosthetic limb. I now feel the stroking's finished, and yet I now feel I have no sensation of my real right hand. It's not there. Nothing exists on the other side of the petition there. I feel like I'm sitting on this side. That is my real hand. In fact, my brain has somehow invented an arm. I feel my arm is connected to this hand. It is bizarre. So I'm guessing if I had pain in my real right hand, maybe this illusion would in some sense allow me to dissociate from it. Indeed, that's just what the scientists are hoping to do with this research. They've developed a virtual reality system based on the same principle, which they're trialling on patients with chronic pain. We're going to see virtual hand flashing in synchrony with your heartbeat. OK. The idea with, with pain relief, if you sort of um, disembody your real hand, for example, you can, let's say, reduce all signals coming from, 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 from that part of the body. For example, with a patient experiencing a burning and painful hand, you can maybe 
by convincing them that the, the real hand is not this painful hand, but, but, the, but the fake one. So I'm starting to disassociate from my real hand yep. and associate with the virtual hand. So the, the heart beat signals is strong enough for, for your brain to, to induce this sense of ownership. And it turns out that this ability to tamper with the brain could explain a whole host of strange phenomena. Now, what's all this got to do with ghosts? Well, the scientists think that that feeling that there's a presence in the room with you has got something to do with the way your brain creates your sense of self. Ghost-like feelings are actually quite common. Imagine walking a, a dark street uh, in, in Sydney or uh, 3 a.m. in the morning and you, you're not sure but you hear some noises and you turn around to make sure nothing is there. It's really this convincing, this feeling. And each time you look back, you don't see anything. The, the sensation disappears. You look back to the front, the sensation reappears. To find out how this feeling of a presence can be induced in healthy brains, Olaf studied the brains of people who feel the phenomenon very strongly, those with neurological disorders like epilepsy and schizophrenia. Very often, I think the large majority of feeling of a presence, it's negative. And in particular, in schizophrenia, where this phenomenon can occur, it's very typical, right? It's a demon, it's something negative, and this person may be inserting thoughts in my mind that are not my own, he's touching me, he's interfering with, what, with my liberty of, of, of taking decisions. The researchers analysed the brains of 12 patients who'd experienced this kind of apparition. Their MRIs revealed lesions in areas of the brain involved in integrating the sensory information about their body's movements and position in space. Could the presence be a second representation of your own body, which is no longer perceived as me, but as someone else, a byproduct of sensory input not being integrated? So again, you have two own body representations, one this one here, another one behind me, but I since there's already a body representation here, there can't be two. If it's not me, if it's another human, it's got to be somebody else. So it's a very logical response, although it sounds very strange, of course, to say that somebody is there, although there is no evidence for this person. To test their theory and conjure up artificial ghosts in healthy subjects, they developed a specialised robot to send mixed signals to the brain. We're going to blindfold you. Oh, OK, I'm going to do a blindfold. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. can do that too. The robot's comprised of two parts, a master front arm that's moved around by me and a second slave arm that recreates exactly the same movements as the first, and it touches me on the back. With the robot, what we do is basically you do the movement and then we introduce this delay um, between the, the movement and the, the tactile feedback. So now we have two conflicts. A spatial conflict, it is I'm moving in the front and I'm getting sensation on the back, and a temporal conflict, I'm moving now and I get feedback delayed. This delay jams the feedback loop in the brain, distorting perception, causing a range of creepy responses. I'm starting to, starting to feel like it's got a life of its own. From feeling the robot has malevolent intent to a spooky presence. It's quite sinister, actually because the only solution of the brain to solve these conflicts that I'm moving here, I'm getting feedback delayed there, as there is someone else touching me. I didn't yeah. feel like there was, I mean, a disembodied presence, but it felt like that robot, I wasn't in control of it. It was kind of doing what it wanted, which was slightly disturbing, actually, especially when I was poking hard, it was hitting me hard. Would you, would you say that like it felt like a, some other agent having... Uh, yeah, 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 it felt like it had its own separate agency. It wasn't okay, yeah. me, it was doing its own thing. My reaction was at the milder end of the spectrum, but some people have felt up to four phantoms in the room, and the feeling was so strong for a few, they asked to stop the experiment. Yes, they, they freaked out. There was one girl who wanted to stop, and it was... Just too strange. If the researchers can create a feeling of a presence in healthy people, perhaps they could do kind of the reverse of that and reduce the hallucinations in people who suffer them. They could have a new treatment for schizophrenia. They wouldn't replace medications, but they'd be an important adjunct to them. 
So if you have a patient who has auditory verbal hallucination, he hears voices, could our system be used? The voice may be, still be there, but it may be less dangerous, less, less intensive, shorter lasting. While it's still early days, the team's working towards a wearable system that combines virtual reality and tactile information to correct the misaligned signals, reducing the severity of the hallucinations. Well, this is very early for us. It's a direction that, um, because of the prominence of the disease that, and, and the, the lack of novel treatments, I think, in the last uh, couple of decades, where, where we would like to make an impact. So the, the strategy would be, can we use and adapt this system we have to down-regulate hallucinations in schizophrenic patients? If this program has raised personal concerns, you may wish to contact one of these counselling services for further information or advice.